Half-Life 2 is one of the most famous games ever made. It was released in 2004 by Valve and it has been played by millions of people from the whole world. In 2004, the game engine's graphics and physics were groundbreaking and they are still amazing to this day. Since the game was created when computers just started being pretty strong and they were capable of running pretty complex engines, plus the fact that they've just licensed Havoc engine and tried to merge it with their source engine while probably not having perfect knowledge of how Havoc works, unlike their source engine. Developers did a lot of very stuff while creating the engine and they've also probably rushed a bit to release Half-Life too soon. Thanks to this, over time, people have found a lot of glitches in the game. Thanks to some errors, developers did encoding. Going fast. Going fast, but backwards. Creeping through walls. Climbing with props. Or even literal no clip. But one day, in the year 2018, on a sunny April Monday, a guy called Bill the Trill was casually playing Half-Life 2 on his Twitch stream. It was a normal playthrough like any other. But suddenly, he started flying in one direction. Of course, why am I stuck? Why, why am I moving so weird? I am not controlling this. He had no idea what he has just done. I am not controlling this. Look. I don't know what's going on right now. And we're just clipping through everything. <laughs> Look at this. I'm not controlling this. Even walls couldn't stop him. He was just flying through them. Alright, well, my planet needs me. Off we go. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know, for some reason I just... One guy that knows a lot about Half-Life 2 glitches called Bob Wembet was watching the stream and was as surprised as Bill was. He immediately showed a clip from the stream to Half-Life speedrunning community to other speedrunners that understand the glitches in the game and nobody had a single idea. What was going on? Well, that required investigation. They immediately knew that it had to do something with the cheap field physics. In 2016, a guy named Margin67 was experimenting with a prop and a buggy. He found that you can make a prop go flying upwards when you brush it against the buggy's wheel, which was a nice glitch, but useless for speedrunning. So, everybody forgot and didn't look into it. But, it's related to what happened to Bill. Others have tried to replicate the glitch, and eventually, the Havingua recreated it. He made the boss go crazy. He started flying like Margan's barrel, and when he touched the flying box, he started flying like Bill. Then a guy named Chillin as such was testing and the box did something that no one understands to this day. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. Got it. Got it. Oh. Oh. Goodbye box. <laughs> Then the figure found that you can make props stuck in the air. Or you can get stuck yourself. And when you destroy a prop that's stuck, the prop skips are stuck in the air too. And then it was found that if you touch a glitched prop, you get yourself into a glitched state. And when you crouch and touch a prop while crouching, you get teleported to the position where you last stood and you get to keep your velocity. But this was an original found by him. This was also found by Margan two years ago. The same exact thing. The Havingua has only rediscovered it and found that it happens after you touch the glitched prop. Then Jared made a tutorial on how to do this glitch, showing the wacky physics, where he said that the feature of the glitch where when you touch a prop while crouched you get teleported to your last standing position is no use. So sometimes instead of floating off the props will just do this, and this clearly doesn't have any use, but it bases it off of the last place you jumped, so I'm gonna come over here, and uh, so I don't wanna jump into that one so I'll just jump into this one, it'll do the same thing. But little did he know. 
The invasome found a way to get into a different glitch state called the S grid by using this glitch. <laughs> yeah! Oh my! I did! I did! I did it! Yes, clip! Yes, clip! We did it, boys! Yes, clip a new engine! I don't know how I did it, but I did it! My game crashed, okay. Where he teleported once by touching a prop while crouched, and then saved and loaded to save. But sadly, the game isn't stable while the player has both glitch states, so it just crashes. Nowadays, we get into the yes clip state by a different way. You can watch my video explaining what yes clip and yes clip state is, what it does, what effects it has on the player, and how is it useful in my different video called No Clip Flying in Half Life 2 Glitch Without Cheats. You can check it in the top right corner. We use this glitch a lot in speedrunning because of its feature that lets you teleport through walls with props. People were wondering what should the glitch be called, so they asked the founder. Just you can name it after me if you want, though. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad I could I could help the the community, even if it was inadvertently. Have a good day at work, dude. I'm really happy about that. That just that just made my entire week. Take it easy. And it was named after him, Bill's Big Trail, and the shortcut for it became BBT. Then Vazon found wrong warping which means going into a change level trigger and spawning somewhere else than intended on the next map. This was made possible thanks to BBT. Vazon jumped on a specific place on the map, saving his last jumping position and velocity at those coordinates on the map, and he grabbed the prop and put it in the next map load trigger, and then he touched the prop which teleported him and the trigger at the same time which changed the map. On the next map, the game teleported him to the same distance away from where he should have spawned, like the distance between the place where he jumped in the last map and where was the trigger that changed the map, and that place was inside the wall in the next map. Now this was groundbreaking. This opened so many new possibilities. Now, to this day, in Half-Life 2 speedrunning, at the beginning of the game, there's this really long cutscene. It starts at about 3 minutes 30 seconds into the run, and ends at about 10 minutes and 35 seconds into the speedrun. 7 whole minutes of just cutscenes at the beginning of every speedrun. Imagine if you could skip this somehow, that would be so awesome. Mason went and experienced with this glitch on a map where the Let the Letter Day cutscene starts. Luckily. There are two cars with the weird wheel physics and props available. And thanks to jumping over guards just before the map with cutscene, the character is invincible and can jump down without dying. The hunt begins. After a few hours of trying to find a way to skip the cutscene, Vazon came up with a method. He uses a paint bucket found in here. He brushes it against the tire, making the prop go flying, then jumps into it, making himself go flying, and putting himself into a glitch state. Then he clips into the room. Alex saves him. Then at a specific place he crouches. And the place where he stood the last time gets saved there. As you can see in this case, the yellow box. When you actually speed run, you cannot see the yellow box. It's enabled by console commands and it's not allowed in actual speed run. But you can practice with it. So he jumps and crouches. Then grabs a prop, then touches the place where he jumped and crouched with a prop, making him go flying and clipping through walls, getting on top of the roof. Then he does some accelerated hopping sequence. If you don't know how accelerated hopping works, you can check my other video where I explain how it works, in the top right corner. Vazon fails it a few times, but eventually he gets to the place where he needs to be at. He quickly stands up and crouches again, so that he saves his standing position in the air there. Then jumps more while still crouched, so that he doesn't cancel the last standing position. Then, eventually, he gets back into where he came from, goes down the elevator while still crouched, grabs a prop of wrong warp with, places it perfectly so it lines up with a trigger that changes the map, and jumps into it. Successfully warping to the last standing position on the next map, then edge bugging, which means tricking the game into thinking that you never landed by being on a edge for such a small amount of time that the game didn't even have a time to register it, while cancelling your vertical velocity, thus avoiding fall damage. And then hopping into the next map. And? Clap. Easy. Easy clap, dude. I skipped Red Letter Day! This was the first route that has been created 5 months ago. It's really hard and complicated. And... After 5 months of optimizations, it looks different, and it's easier. 
The most up-to-date route was demonstrated by Vazon on Games Done Quick, which, if someone doesn't know, is an event where all speedrunning communities showcase their work in finding glitches and tricks in games that led up to completing the game in the least amount of time as possible. And Half-Life 2 was also there this year. Watch his commentary as he performs his trick. So now what he's going to do is he's going to jump past the security guard. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit precise, so it's a little tricky. Uh, what this does is it allows you to skip a significant portion of this map, this apartment map. Not only that, but it skips a trigger that would normally allow you to take fall damage on the upcoming map. So currently, actually, uh, Gordon's invincible. Nothing can harm him. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to use this uh, fact to drop down onto the lower street. And now we're going to be doing uh, something that makes complete sense. And I'm sure under, like, we're going to explain it and everyone's going to understand it. Yeah, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this prop and do weird things. So I want to rub it against, oh, that dropped it. <laughs> I'm going to rub it against this tire here. And yeah, there it goes. It starts floating. Then we're going to jump into it. Now we start floating, because you know why not? And we clip through this wall. And then we just clip in here. And now we have to watch a cutscene. Yeah. This is probably the trick that makes the least sense in all of... Oh, oh yeah. The fact yeah. that this trick exists, the stars had to align in the most perf like, perfect way possible. So this trick in general is called Bill's Big Thrill because the dude who uh, found it is named Bill the Thrill on Twitch. Dr. So shout outs to Bill the Thrill for uh, a random casual player for finding this trick. So there's a few important things about this trick that allow you to, be, uh, to skip uh, a lot of the game by using it. So the first thing is that when you jump and crouch in the air, the position where you jump at, uh, your hitbox gets stored there, and you can hit the hitbox and start floating with a prop. Hopefully I get this first try because I saved, because oof, that's going to be oh, annoying. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah so uh, this trick you have to do in one try, uh, which is really hard. So what he's doing is he's trying to set his position nice. in a particular way with an ABH so that he has a lot of speed nice. in a particular position. That was so fast. Right. That it's, was very fast. The trick isn't over yet, but that was one of the harder parts of yep. it. Yep. So the last thing he has to do is another property of this trick is that when you touch a prop, you are going to immediately teleport to that prop. So. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the next map and touch a prop at the exact same tick, a tick basically being a frame, and that will allow us to do a very big thing. <laughs> so I got to like place it like just inside the level chain so I like touch it at the same time. Yeah, you're going to see that he's going to be like really just inching back and forth trying to make sure this pallet's in the right place before he touches the level trigger. And if he does it right, he is going to literally just warp straight out of bounds right next to the end of the map. Or, well, not out of bounds, but... <laughs> it, it's an inbounds run, trust it's, me. It is inbounds. inbounds. All right, so... This, this is precise to, like, the tenth of a unit, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. If you see those little numbers in the top right of the screen, that's what he's using. There we go. And... and you got it. Yes. So, and you remember that really long cutscene where, like, you teleport around and you're supposed to go to Black Mesa East, but you instead don't. You go into an office and talk to a That's dude. Not what I want we're not there. doing that. And now we're doing a cheat. Literally cheating. Hello, console. Thanks for eating my input. OK. There we go. So uh, that was called a save delete. Basically, how that works is that uh, when you delete one of your previous saves in this game, the game will get confused when you try to reload uh, that previous save. And trying to reload it, it will realize it's not there, and it will load a default save instead. So even though we skipped the suit, we are able to get the suit by save deleting and coming back onto this map. That was amazing commentary by Vazon and others from the Sourcelands community, I gotta say. Anyway, now, let's see how fast this actually is. Let's look at the world record by Maltemler in 1 hour and 3 minutes before the skip was found. His time at this part of the run was 2 minutes and 57 seconds. After the red letter cutscene, his time was 11 minutes and 3 seconds. That's 8 minutes and 6 seconds of cutscenes. Now, let's look at the current world record, also by Maltemler, in 48 minutes and 55 seconds. His time before the red letter day skip was 2 minutes and 48 seconds. And after the skip, drum roll please. 5 minutes and 5 seconds. That means that the skip took only 2 minutes and 38 seconds, which is, in total, 5 minutes and 18 seconds faster than going through the cutscene without the skip. Now, how does this even work? Well, the answer is, we don't really know exactly. Looking at the game's duct tape, spaghetti code helped. Part of the game's code is leaked, but the whole physics code isn't public, sadly. First off, player has two hitboxes in the game's code. Havoc hitbox, 
which is mainly responsible for player's hitbox communication with props or vehicles, and Quake hitbox, which is mainly responsible for the player's movement. The most logical reason why this glitch happens is that the game puts vehicle tires that are not moving in a park state, where they save performance by having disabled physics. Then, when you brush a prop against the tire, the prop thinks it interacts with the tire, and it gets its physics disabled too. Then, Gordon touches the prop and loses physics as well. And then, player's havoc hitbox gets separated from quake hitbox when it stops updating, which happens in some cases when player is crouching, or in some cases when player jumps, which allows to do glitchy teleporting things, as you could see with the wrong work, for example. Or, another reason, which is more of a theory, it's caused by a faction value of the wheel being weirdly coded, glitching the prop physics as it interacts with the tire's geometry, so then the prop physics have no idea what to do, so they just give up entirely. And when we touch the glitched prop, we glitch our hitbox as well. Or you can combine both. Wayzone has come up with a big theory, which is maybe wrong, but maybe it's right. When the vehicle is stopped, the tires are in a parked state, which makes them stop updating every tick. Side note, Half-Life 2 Service Engine runs at 66 ticks per second, and these tires have a friction coefficient of 0. If a prop were to touch the tire directly, it would just work fine and just slide off. But the collision detection is a little wider than the actual forward space of the tire, just slightly offset. If you touch a physics object on that edge, it won't cause an update to the physics of the tire and it will take into account the friction. But since it's not updating, it goes in one direction. When you touch the prop, the Havoc hitbox interacts with it and tries to collide with it. And it thinks it should bounce off of it, which it does. And the prop floats in a different direction. The box will go in a straight line as a result. Then, when you change the collision state of Gordon, as in standing or crouching, the quick hitbox realizes that, and then the Havoc hitbox will freeze if it's in the opposite state. And how teleporting works is, when your Quake hitbox touches a prop, the game will try and place you to where your Havoc hitbox is, since it will control how the prop will react. Remember, Havoc hitbox is responsible for player's hitbox communication with props, so you teleport to the box. And if you touch the Havoc hitbox with a prop, it will go back in the state of moving in one direction, because it gets more collision updates, and it still thinks it's colliding with a prop on the tire as well. And one more feature of the glitch, by loading into the next map, or by saving and loading a save, the glitch stops working since the game resets physics. This was the story behind Half-Life 2 glitch called Bill's Big Thrill. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you want to do glitch hunting with us, or speedrunning Half-Life 2 with us, or just having fun exploring all sorts of Half-Life 2 glitches, you can join our Source Runs Discord. The link is in the description. We can help you learn a lot with tutorials. Or for example we have a document that teaches you everything. Or tutorial series on Half-Life 2 from Wayzone for example. Or if you wanna see more Half-Life 2 videos where I explain or have fun with glitches. For example the no-clip glitch, the fast movement, or stopping your train in Half-Life 2 using neat tricks. You can check my source engine playlist. I'm planning to do more videos like this, I really enjoy it. You can subscribe to my channel and get notified about my new videos. If you liked the video, you can leave a like or a comment. Thanks for watching, bye!